Hey guys, Tech Made Easy, and thank you so much for clicking on our video today. Well, we've got a unique product for you. This is a Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hour battery and power station. Pretty cool. So you can charge USB devices with this. You can recharge it with solar. It's stackable. It's mountable. It comes with a five-year warranty. And we're going to check this out. We're going to do some testing, go over some of the details. So why don't we go ahead and get this party started? Hi, this is Al from Tech Made Easy with a really quick message. The video you're about to watch is sponsored. We received this product from the vendor. But keep in mind, we will be very honest with you as we review the product. That is very important to us. If you like our video, I sure hope you give us a thumbs up. I hope you share our video. And last, I really hope you subscribe and become a part of the family. Thank you. All right, let me be up front and just kind of go over what I'm going to be covering. As you can see here, there's a bunch of stuff. Hit pause. Take a look at this if you want. I don't want to go over the whole thing. So go ahead and hit pause. Take a look real quick. And uh, let's get started. Why don't we go ahead and get this unboxed? And there it is. Wow, that is a battery, huh? And we're going to take a close look, so don't worry. Right now, we're just covering what is included. So you get the battery charging hub, which actually allows you to power devices. You know, devices that me and you use, right? Phones and newer laptops and stuff like that. We're going to take a close look at that. We get a manual for the battery. We get a little guide here for the charging hub. You also get uh, mounting plates. There's, there's steel mounting plates. They're pretty thick and heavy and you do get screws also so that you can actually mount this battery somewhere again this is expandable also I'll talk more about that but that is our close look real quick let's go over some basics and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off going over basics with the battery and then later on I'll do a close look and then I'm gonna go over basics with this hub all right, you know, specs and things like that. So let's start off with the battery, first of all. Now, combination with the hub is $469. So that's what it runs. That's MSRP. But I've seen this on sale. Again, it is a lithium iron phosphate battery. The capacity is 1,280 watt hours. So that's nice size. Now, battery life cycles is 2,000, and then it goes to 80%. All right, so think about that. You can use this 2,000 times from 100% to zero. And after that, you still have 80% of the battery left. Now, I will tell you, with batteries, especially lithium ion phosphate, but lithium, never let it go to zero and never let it go to 100 and sit there, okay? Um, realistically, if you're going to use this you know, uh, if you're going to store it, I should say, you should probably store it around 50%. And, and that's, again, if you're going to store it for like a month or something like that. But never let it sit at 0% and never let it sit at 100% for days, um, anything like that. It's really not good for the battery itself. But you'll also have to cycle these. So if you let this sit around for months, well, you can't because you're also going to need to cycle these as well. So just be aware, all right? But Let's show you an image so you understand the BMS, which is the battery management system, on how it protects itself. Let's bring that up. And as you can see there, those are all the different ways that it can protect itself because it actually has a BMS, which is cool. Now let's go over temperatures real quick so you know a little bit about temperatures, like charging, discharging. So let's pull up an image and show you that so you can see that, okay? Another thing I want to bring up is uh, it is IP waterproof and flame resistant, as you could see from the image on the screen. So that's uh, very helpful. And one more thing I'm going to bring up, it is mountable. So I'll show you an example of how someone would mount this in a van or an RV with that image that you see there. 
Now, we already talked about what was included, so you know that. And the weight on this thing is 27.56 pounds or 12.5 kilograms. So it's not that light, but they do give you these straps. All right, we'll take a look at that on the close look. Hey, the warranty on this is five years, so that's not bad at all. So this is the uh, DC charging hub. And it's got an Anderson on the bottom and basically would go here and uh, connect on the top there, all right? So that's it there. Now, this has a DC in, which is a, basically an Anderson, right? So you would probably use solar for that. 11 to 25 volts. And the MPPT controller that's in here, which is interesting. I didn't think it had one. will handle 100 watts of solar. And uh, we're going to demo that later in the video uh, during some of our demonstrations. So look out for that. Now, as far as output is concerned, you've got two 18-watt USB Type A's. You've got one USB Type C, which is 30-watt. And then you've got you know, a barrel plug and a car charger. And these are both 12-volt, 10-amp. So nice little covers. And we'll be back and we'll go over some more stuff. So look at the uh, battery real quick. Nothing special here, right? I mean, this is basically a battery. You got your terminals, all right? You do have straps. They're not adjustable, but uh, you get straps on both sides. And it looks like they're double straps, by the way. So, you know, to handle the weight, the 27 pounds, right? So you've got that. This is the port, the Anderson port that basically connects the hub. So when you're going to connect the hub, you're going to just take this, rotate it, put it in this little holder here, and then put the hub down, okay? So there you go. You've got a real-time battery indicator here. I don't know, let me see if I can move some of the light and press the button here and see if I get, ah, there it goes, okay. So we've got a, you know, a 50% charge it looks like, or maybe a little less than that. That's the button to basically uh, turn on the indicator. Here is your negative terminal. Here is your positive terminal. Yeah, let me just take a quick look at the unit. Simple. So the straps, you know, basically there's a holder that holds the weight up. So that's pretty interesting there. I'm just trying to get some light down there for you. Back of the unit, pretty simple. All right. And the bottom, give me a second. Let me see what's on the bottom. So here's the bottom. I'm not going to tilt it all the way. It's not going to have any rubber, just so you'll know if you're going to put this on a surface. It seems pretty smooth, though, you know, so I don't see any sharp uh, areas on the bottom of this unit. Now, again, the mounting plates are included if you're going to mount this, like that picture that I showed you a little while ago. I'll bring it up again, all right, but you'll be able to see that you can mount this. But that's kind of it there, huh? A little heavy, but... That's how you mount it also, if you see that picture. So a quick close-up of the hub. That's your power button right there, okay? And then this is going to be a charge and a discharge indicator right here. Again, on the bottom, you've got your um, Anderson. And then you take this, lay it in place, and just push it down. Take it back out. You just hold it like this and wiggle it up. But now it's in place. So on the left side, and it's on now because I just turned it on. So I'm wondering if I can yeah, turn it off. So, you know, obviously we went over the ports before, but again, you can use this Anderson for your input for solar, your USBs, right? 18 watt, USB type C, 30 watt. And then you've got your car charger and your barrel port, 12 volt, 10 amp. So that's kind of it. It's a pretty simple device. And it's nice that you can convert a battery into a DC you know, power station. So I'm bringing up a slide so you can actually see that it is stackable. Basically, it stacks in parallel up to four batteries. And the manufacturer says, do not string the batteries in series. So just be aware right there on the bottom. All right, but that's it. You can stack up to four in parallel.
So let's go over some estimated run times and charge times. Now this information was provided by the Dr. Prepare website. So the basic smartphone, right? A basic smartphone, not, nothing big, 10 watt hour, you can get about 128 charges. A seven inch tablet, a 30 watt hour tablet, you can get about 42 charges. A laptop, 45 watts, you can charge that about 28 times. A drone with a 40 watt hour battery can be charged about 32 times. A small fan, a 30 watt fan, can run for an estimated 42 hours. A small DSLR camera, 7.3 watt hours, can be charged about 175 times. A mini fridge, about a 45 watt, can actually run an estimated 28 hours. A CPAP that uses about 90 watts can run about 14.2 hours. And lastly, a small camping light that uses about 10 watts can run about 128 hours on this battery, right? This 1,280 watt hour battery by Dr. Prepare. So let's do a couple of demonstrations. Now, one of the lights that I like using in my studio are these, uh, you know, flexible goose lights, they call them, I guess. And this one's not plugged in right now because I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this to see if it provides enough power. These are, these are LED, so they don't use a lot of power. But let's go ahead and take this and I'm going to plug it in. All right. And then I'll go ahead and turn on the power button. All right. So there's the power button. The blue light is on. And let me just see if this light works. There you go. So as you could see, you could use a USB LED light. And LED lights don't really use a lot of power. You know, this. I wish this had a little display showing you that. But again, that would probably use more power and more battery. So it does work. Pretty cool. Next quick demonstration. Let's turn this on and see if it'll power a iPhone. This is a 14 Pro. So let's just take this, turn off the screen, plug this in. It lit up and it is showing the lightning bolt in the corner there. Okay, so that works. So I want to now plug my Fold 3 in. This is the foldable phone, you know, the Samsung Fold 3. What I want to do, because the Samsung shows you on the bottom how long until full, it's got a 63% charge. So this is on. And as you can see, I've got two cables. I've got the USB-A uh, and the USB Type-C. So let's plug in the USB-A first and see how long it says it's going to charge it. It'll pop up on the screen. We'll take a look at that and see. Well, it's plugged in and it says fast charging 45 minutes until full. Now let's go ahead and plug in the USB Type-C, which is 30 watts, right? One is 18 watts we just plugged in and this is 30 watts. So, you know, what kind of a difference does a 30 watt make? So I would cut it down by four more minutes, 41 minutes until full. All right, not a big difference, but there you could see it actually can power a Samsung Fold 3 as well. Next question, can it power a 12.9 inch iPad Pro? Well, we're gonna go ahead and use USB Type-C and plug it in and see what happens. And there you go, we've got it plugged in and uh, we're showing the lightning bolt in the corner with some fingerprints and that's a success there here's our next test uh, this is a dell two-in-one laptop now the only thing i'm confused with is the output on the usb type c is 30 watts i don't know if this needs more than 30 watts but what we're going to do is really just look at this battery indicator down here on the bottom right now it doesn't show charging let me go ahead and plug it in on the side here and uh, watch and zoom in and see. Look at that. It's charging. Interesting.
Okay, so it is able to power a laptop that uses a USB Type-C. Probably like a little MacBook as well, I guess. I'm not sure. So I looked in the bottom corner and I saw kind of like an, you know, an error symbol or something like that. I was like, what's going on? And this is just about maybe two minutes after I did the demo. So I went into the control panel and it's showing some kind of error. And I waited about three minutes. I didn't see this go from 68 to 69. Now, when I click on the error, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't give me any information. It's uh, currently 1.41 p.m. So what I'll do is I'll wait until 1.46. I'll give it five more minutes. All right, it's 1.46, and it actually did go up 1%. So 1.46 p.m., as you can see here. And by the way, it does actually say that it'll take two hours and seven minutes to charge from 69% to 100. So it's probably just that it's such a slow charger. That's probably what that error is for. Here we are on our next test. I'm in the kitchen with Brooklyn and we've got a set power. This is the AJ40. It's a 43 quart, uh, 12 volt, 24 volt DC. You know, so look at that, a DC, you know, refrigerator, freezer, etc. So uh, let's go ahead and plug that in and see if it works. She's excited. So look, as you can see, it's got this car charger, right? So what we want to do now is just turn the unit on, right? We're going to go ahead and plug in the outlet. And that thing kicked on right away. That's pretty cool. Now, obviously, you know, it's going to take a while to get cold and all that good stuff. But just seeing power with no error on the screen, I hear it actually kicked on. So the compressor kicked on as well. To me, that's a success. What do you think, Brooklyn? Well, good morning. I'm out here with beautiful Brooklyn on a sunny day in the winter. We're going to go ahead and start our solar test on the Dr. Prepper 100 amp hour, right? And so what we are using is a 100 watt solar panel. We've got some extra cable, right? Solar cable. Why? Because we want to keep the power station here and we want the solar panel out there in the sun, okay? So we also have a disconnector tool. This disconnects the solar cable basically, you know, from the power station. So we'll demonstrate that. And then one of our favorite tools, honestly, we used to use a can of soup, but this little thing for like 20 bucks basically helps us get the best solar angle. I'll show you that, I'll demonstrate it. And then I don't know if this cable exists anymore, but in order to um, charge this via solar, you've got to have an Anderson solar cable. All right, now this one actually is pretty cool. It's got Anderson, it's got XT, it's got barrel, so it's, it's nice, but it's really hard to find. No matter what, I'll put links in the description if you decide to get one of these and you want to do solar. All right, let's go over some basics before we do the demo. So we're only connecting one solar panel, right? You know, a 100 watt solar panel. Now this maxes at 100 watts of solar. Now, when you connect one solar panel, no big deal. When you connect multiple, you can connect in series or in parallel. But we're not going to cover that today because this is a power station with limited solar capabilities. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is that the solar panel you're connecting meets the specs of the power station because if it doesn't, it can burn out the MPT controller, okay? So the Dr. Prepper supports 100 watts of solar and 11 to 25 volt. Now, I couldn't find the amperage, which normally, you know, is available. I couldn't find that, but 11 to 25 volts. That panel there 
is a 24.3 volt panel. And so that's a match because the panel is under the requirement or the maximum, right? Because this can only support up to 25 volts. If I went and bought a solar panel that was like 33 volts and connected it to this, I could actually damage this controller here, you know, all right? Not the battery, but the actual controller. So just know that, all right? I hope that helped. Let's go ahead and start connecting and we'll tell you what we're doing every step of the way. So we're in the back of the solar panel and that's where you got the wires, right? Male and female. And these are our extension cables, right? So we can actually run this to the yard. Very simple. All you want to do is connect male to female. And you don't want to leave a gap like that. You want to make sure this plugs in all the way and, you, and hopefully you hear a click. Same thing here. Again, male to female, right? And later on, we'll show you this tool and how this actually gets disconnected. But let's go ahead and position our panel. So here's our solar panel. And we're going to show you this guide. And I'm going to show you it where it's not perfect. So you see that little dot back there, right? So the front dot creates a shadow. And if you're looking, well, this is not in a perfect position. So it tells me I have to move the panel over just a little bit, but I also have to move it back. So if I move it back, back and over, I'll get the best position so that that shadow is in the target. And, you know, that's really the best angle to give me the most wattage so let me do that real quick so it took me a second i used this to adjust the panel but let me show you now so if you could see there that dot is like 99.9 percent .9 in the dead center as i go over to here you'll see the sun glaring but there you go i mean really a very helpful accessory the panel's ready let's plug this in it is time to connect Anderson to this little box here, this charger box. Red, black, red, black. Very simple. Take it, push it in all the way. Now we're going to connect our solar cable, which, you know, last two pieces here. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right. Connect that. And uh, we now have power there. And okay, now we're seeing uh, input. So there you go. You got a one solid and one flashing showing that we're charging. So this is working. Obviously no percentage or anything like that, and that's okay. But as you can see, it's working. So we're all set up here. And our 100 watt panel with Brooklyn is working well. So when you're done and you want to disconnect your cables, right? You see these two pins? Well, they're from this side. They pushed in. And using this tool, this disconnector tool, is really easy. All you do is take it, put it underneath, and you're going to see that it's now pushing up against the two pins. And you just pull it out, and you've just used your solar MC4 disconnector tool. I'll put links in the description for all these items. I hope this was helpful. By the way, this solar panel sells anywhere from $90 to $120. It's made by Renogy, and uh, they, they've been around a long time. I mean, look at Brooklyn. She really likes that panel. We'll put links in the description. Again, I hope this uh, was really helpful for you. It's time to go over some pros and cons. Now, I'm going to start off with cons, and then I'll end with pros. And there's only a few cons, but i got to tell you, there's a lot more pros. So our first con would be, I wish they would have included a solar cable. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, this is a battery, but it's not. Once they made this unique and gave you the ability to call it a power station, they should have included an Anderson. Now, I'm going to have some in the links in the description, so check that out. But the second con is this thing can be heavy. Now, if you use these included straps, you're probably going to carry it on one side of your body. And that's where it can get heavy. You'll have to switch back and forth. All right. So that's it for our cons. Let's go ahead and cover our pros now. And we've got a good list of pros. So first and foremost, this thing is a good match. If you have an RV, if you have a cabin, you know, this thing's expandable. It's mountable. 
It's stackable, you know, IP65 rated, you know, which is really nice. So those things are very, very helpful. And it, this thing is very innovative, you know, have, taking a battery and then putting a power hub on it is pretty darn innovative, to be honest with you. I'm glad they included a uh, USB Type-C port as well, because a lot of devices now are requiring them. You know, so that's a 30 watt USB Type-C. Now the straps were plenty strong, so that's important. Uh, no issues there. I like the covers on, on the ports. I think that's gonna be helpful. Our solar test, our basic solar test worked fine. We used this for about a month. We really had no issues, so that was huge. And it even powered our 43 quart, you know, fridge freezer. So not bad. So let's check out the next section, which is even more important. Let's now go over my simple 10 scale rating system. As you can see, 1.5 to 6.5. Cannot recommend due to many reasons. 7.5 to 8.5, some concerns, but the product performs well and then nine all the way to a 10. And I will tell you, I have not given out a nine, 9.5 or a 10 as of yet, but let's see what score this power station gets. Let me go to the next slide. And surprise, I'm actually giving this one a nine. You know what? It does what it says it's supposed to do, right? Many positives, it's got a high rating. It's also unique, right? You know, and that's the thing also that I, I probably pushed it to a nine. So no issues. The product worked well. I've used it for a couple of weeks. And congratulations on being the first to get a score of a nine. So pleasantly surprised is how I can really talk about this power station. You know, I used this thing for weeks, you know, just charging my devices, USB devices. Um, I used the car charger as well. I had no issues whatsoever. The build quality, it really seems to be built like a brick. It's expandable, mountable, stackable. It got my first nine rating, you know, go back and check that. So I really hope this video helped you in some way. And if it did, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the video and it really helps the channel. And by the way, if you aren't a subscriber to our channel, take a moment and subscribe. We would love to have you as a member of the family. And if you want, follow us on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All right, guys, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate your time. Hey guys, take a moment and give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. As you can see, Brooklyn, she's waving her tail for you. Take a moment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell and you'll get notified of new videos we come out with. Also, follow us and contact us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.